My name is Phil Harris. I'm Professor of Plant Science and uh, formerly I was the founding director in the Centre of, for Agroecology and Food Security here at Coventry University. The research we've been doing on Prosopis goes back uh, more than 25 years and the initial interest really sprang out of the big problems and famines that were experienced in East Africa in the mid-1980s. Uh, the famines which were so prominent in the news at the time and which led to live aid, comic relief and, um, and, and, and the charitable aims to do something about famine in Africa. Prosopis is a botanical name that refers to quite a, a large group of, of different trees uh, within, within the same genus but a lot of people will be familiar with some of those species under the common name mesquite which is a common name given to it in Spanish-speaking Central and uh, North America. And uh, many people will be familiar with the use of mesquite as barbecue charcoal or to impart a pleasant flavouring to barbecued meats or to, um, to flavour potato products, me mesquite uh, crisps, for example, you can buy in supermarkets. And, um, and these days there's also a very a growing and very lucrative market for mesquite flour as a health food. It's, it's highly nutritious, it has high protein and sugar contents and it has a glycemic index that makes it suitable for diabetics to, to consume for example. Most of the prosopis species uh, in the world of, of economic importance come from South America and Central America. Uh, but because of their value in drylands, over the last 150 years they've been spread deliberately to most of the dry areas of the world, to India, the dry parts of Africa, to Australia and so on. And uh, where they've been introduced into new areas, the prosopis trees have, have been a double-edged sword really. On the one hand they've been valuable resources for local people, providing fodder for livestock, fuel, charcoal, sometimes human food. On the other hand, in many countries, they've also spread to be difficult invasive weeds and caused a problem on rangelands or, or caused problems where they block roads and waterways. One of the main approaches that we've adopted has been to, uh, to, to resolve this issue of the competition between a resource and a weed when we're looking at the prosopis trees. So we've been able to, first of all, reliably, and for the first time internationally, reliably identify exactly which species are which and where they are across the globe. But more importantly, to look at how to address the balance between the prosopis trees as an undesirable weed and the prosopis trees as a desirable resource. We were able to uh, work with the local people to develop a suite of recipes that were culturally acceptable and palatable to local people utilising the prosopis pods for human food in areas which were prone to famine and where food trucks uh, bringing food aid from the port of Mombasa were driving into areas, driving past prosopis trees hanging with pods which could be used for safely and, and uh, pleasantly used for, for human food either for a famine food or as a, an ongoing component of a, of a local diet. And, and in doing so, you know, increasing the, the livelihood, the income of local people in those areas through the collection and sale of those pods, um, both in Kenya and indeed now exported to South Africa, some of them. I think that much more will need to be done on the technological aspects of, it ex of its exploitation. I think its, it's, it's potential value, its potential food value, its potential value for industrial products like gums for the food industry, its potential uh, medicinal value, that there, its potential livestock feed value as, as a high value concentrate. A lot of these areas, they're known but the, the surface has barely been scratched. There's much, much more work to do to develop the, the utilisation and, and economic value of the, of, of, of the resource. Mm -hmm.